Today we're going to talk about 10 ways to beat a DUI. Hello everyone, I'm attorney Joe Pometto, Joe the lawyer, the founding partner of Joe Pometto Law. Oftentimes when people get DUIs, they are resigned to losing. They think that they've already lost their case and that there's no way to win. I'm here to tell you that is not always true. I've been practicing law for over seven years. I've done many DUI cases, many traffic cases. That's a large majority of my work, and there are ways to beat a DUI. Today, I'm going to list 10 ways that you can beat a DUI. Number one is suppression. What do I mean by suppression? Well, if the police made an illegal stop of your vehicle, you can suppress all the evidence that came after that illegal stop. In order for the police to stop your vehicle legally, they need to have reasonable suspicion and or probable cause, which means they have to have a reason for making the traffic stop. This is required by the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, which protects citizens from unreasonable searches and seizures. Sometimes the police will put something in the report that either isn't true or doesn't rise to the level of reasonable suspicion and or probable cause for them to make the traffic stop. So if the police did not follow the correct procedure or did not pull your car over for a legal reason, you may be able to challenge the stop and therefore knock out all of the evidence that came after the traffic stop. Number two, medical conditions. I have a case right now where uh, an individual uh, wrecked their car and then the police investigated afterwards for DUI. They believed that he was intoxicated. However, the individual was suffering from a medical condition that mimicked the uh, symptoms of being drunk or under the influence of drugs. We plan to use expert evidence to show that this individual was actually suffering from a medical condition that he was not actually intoxicated in order to beat the DUI. So if you have a medical condition that's similar to intoxication, you may be able to use that to challenge the DUI. Number three, rising blood alcohol. Most people don't know this, but when you take a drink, it can take about 30 minutes for that alcohol to hit your system and uh, raise the BAC, the blood alcohol content of your blood. Picture this scenario. You have your last drink at a bar, you get in the car, you're driving out of the bar, and the police pull you over. They take your blood about 30 minutes after the stop. Well, it took 30 minutes for that alcohol to register in your blood. You were driving 30 minutes ago, so 30 minutes before they took your blood, your blood alcohol content may have been lower than it was whenever they performed the test. So, perhaps at the time you were driving, you had a lower BAC than the time when they took your blood because of the time it takes for the blood to hit you to hit your system. I'm sorry, the alcohol to hit your system. This is a common way to challenge DUIs. You may not beat the DUI, but the BAC that the police take at the hospital may not be the BAC that it was when you were actually driving the vehicle. You can get your penalties reduced this way. Uh, number four, bad field sobriety tests. So the police are trained to give field sobriety tests in a certain way. However, they don't always do it. Take, for example, the walk and turn. That has to be performed on a flat, clear surface when the police have you walk on the straight line. If they didn't do that properly, you can either get it dismissed from the case, that evidence, or you can challenge the accuracy of the test at trial. Number five, not driving. I'll give you a common scenario here. Some people leave the bar, they go into their car, they fall asleep in order to sleep it off. Well, you can still be charged with a DUI if you were sitting in the, pass, in the driver's seat and or the car was running. So the actual facts of where you were in the vehicle can impact whether or not they can charge you with a DUI. I'll give you a little tip. I don't advise sleeping it off in a vehicle ever, but sleeping it off in a vehicle, you should definitely do it in the passenger seat and not in the driver's seat. It may protect you from a DUI. 
Number six, inaccurate breath or blood test. The machines the police use are not perfect. You may think that they are, and the majority of the time they are. However, there are expert witnesses who can come in and talk about the mistake ratio for blood alcohol and breath tests. On top of that, a breathalyzer has to be properly calibrated in order to take an accurate test. Furthermore, the police may have you take several tests. Which one do they use? Well, you should get the benefit of the lower test. So there are ways to challenge the accuracy of a blood and or breath test. Number, number eight, the chain of custody for the breath test, for the blood test. So when your blood is taken at the hospital, um, and then sent to the lab, there has to be proper documentation to show where that blood was taken and how it got to the lab and where it was taken and stored at the lab where it was tested. You can sometimes challenge that chain of custody. If there was a mistake in the chain of custody, you may be able to uh, suppress, I used that word before, suppress the evidence of the blood alcohol content test. Number Eight, the police took your blood or breath in violation of the Fourth Amendment. Just like the police have to follow certain procedures in order to stop your vehicle and investigate a DUI, they also have to do the same when taking your blood or breath. If they improperly coerce you or otherwise do not follow procedure, you may be able to exclude the blood, the blood or breath evidence from your trial. Number nine, mouth alcohol. This isn't all that often. However, some people may have a type of dental work where alcohol gets trapped inside their mouth. If that occurs, the breath test that they give may be inaccurate, and this may be a way for us to challenge the actual breath test and the results of the breath test. And then number 10, other substances. So, you may be, a person who gets a DUI may be taking certain prescription drugs, okay, which mix or affect the way that the individual drives, okay. This doesn't, this means that you may not always be convicted of a DUI if you were taking your prescription drugs and or you were using them properly. It can also depend on how they mix with alcohol and other substances. So if you're taking prescription drugs, when you get the DUI, whether the DUI is for drugs and or alcohol, you need to let your attorney know there may be ways to challenge the DUI depending on what substances you were actually taking. This list I just gave you of 10 ways to beat a DUI is not exhaustive and they don't always work every time. However, I want to give you hope that sometimes you can beat a DUI. There's many ways to do it and there's more ways than the ways that I listed here today. So thank you for watching this video. I'm Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer, founding partner of Joe Pometto Law. If you like this content and you want more, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, leave a comment uh, if you have a question or if there's something that you want to say to me. I upload videos regularly on the law on topics like DUIs. Additionally, I have an email list in the description of the video. Sign up and you will get a, a PDF of five things to do whenever you're pulled over by the police. Thank you for watching today. Call me if you get a DUI. I'll be happy to help.